The new MacBook Pros are here. Yo, what's up guys? Sam here. I look like I'm ascending with this, this sun shining behind me. And I might be, you know? I just might be because I have been just blown away by the event today. I already did my recap and now I want to do a deeper dive on the differences between the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pro, but even more specifically the M1 Pro and M1 Max chips that Apple announced because it's a little bit confusing. I'm going to go through all the differences, give you guys some tips and then tell you which one I ultimately decided to buy. So if you're excited, well, you guys know what to do. So what are you waiting for? If you're excited for today's video, drop a like down below. It seriously helps me and the channel out and click that subscribe button and turn on the bell for notifications so that you never miss a beat. Okay, so right off the bat, Apple did something pretty different for the MacBook Pros this year, and it's a complete break from what they've done historically. Like in the past, the 13 and the 15 or 16 inch MacBook Pros had completely different chipsets inside, completely different graphics options, completely different max RAM and storage. Apple's done away with all of that. So at the core now, the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pro are the exact same computer. Apple has moved the complexity to the chip that you can configure on the inside, and that's where things get really different. I know that sounds a little bit too simple because it's been so much different in the past, but spec for spec, side by side on the machines themselves, this is the difference. You've got the bigger screen on the 16 inch, you've got a larger battery that gives you longer battery life. Apple says you get 11 hours of wireless web on the 14 inch, but three additional hours at 14 hours on the 16 inch. And then maybe most importantly, which is something I'm actually considering for the first time, is that the 14 inch is uh, considerably lighter and more portable. The 14 inch is not only a smaller machine, it's also a lot lighter at three and a half pounds, where the 16 inch is 4.7 pounds, which is not a huge difference. Like if you're using this as a machine, it's sitting down. It doesn't really matter if you travel a ton it might be worth considering the 14 inch. And you're like, dude, but why? The 14 inch just can't be as powerful or wait, it can this year. But everything else for these MacBook Pros is in parity. The new 1080p webcam, the new keyboard, the lack of a touch bar, the mini LED display that is ProMotion 120 hertz, all the addition of the ports like HDMI, SD card reader, and MagSafe. And this is such a big deal for me because options that have historically been limited to the more powerful 16 inch MacBook Pro, they are equal in parity between the 14 and the 16 inch now because the only differences aside from screen size, battery, and weight and size. It's the chips. It's the M1 Pro and the M1 Max, which are horrible names. Like, yes, they sound okay, Mark. They're horrible names. It's confusing. Apple has a Pro phone and a Pro Max iPhone, but then they call the chip the Max and not the Pro Max. And Oh, it's just weird. It just feels icky. I'm just going to say that straight up. The specs of these chips, though, are not icky at all. They are insane. So once you've decided if you want the more portable, less battery life, and smaller screen 14-inch MacBook Pro, or the bigger screen, biggest battery, less portable 16-inch MacBook Pro, you have to decide between one of those two. Then you can configure it with whatever chip and storage and RAM you want. Full disclaimer though, there's one MacBook Pro that doesn't fit what I'm about to talk about, which is the base model of the 14-inch. It's 2,000 bucks and Apple gives you an eight core CPU and a 14 core GPU. Those are different specs than the other M1 Pro and M1 Max chips that we're gonna be talking about. So if you save the money there, you're gonna get less performance on both the CPU and the GPU, and that's just what it is. So let's look at these chips spec for spec and see what the differences are. There is the M1 Pro and the M1 Max. Both of these feature the exact same 10 core setup with eight high performance cores and two high efficiency cores. So whether you're buying the $2,500 14 inch or like the six grand 16 inch, uh, you're getting the exact same CPU spec. It is in the GPU where Apple just goes crazy because while the M1 Pro can go up to 16 cores, which is already double the previous M1 chip, the M1 Max can go up to 32 GPU cores, which is insane. I can't believe we're at 32 GPU cores this quickly. Like, you know how the Mac couldn't ever game because the GPU was too weak on the chip? Um, I'm not saying we're there yet. I'm saying this is the closest we've ever been. There is also a huge differentiation in RAM options. You can get up to 32 gigabytes on the M1 Pro. Guys, you can go up to 64 gigabytes for the max chip on here, which integrated memory, it's not like actual double 128 gigabytes of RAM, but 64 gigabytes of RAM is nutty. Like it's not 64 gigabytes of RAM like you traditionally think. It's integrated memory to the, it's insane. Like 16 gigabytes of RAM on the M1 processor from last year was a lot. 
like almost more than I ever needed. 64 is quadruple that. Memory bandwidth wise, which I don't think is the most important metric. There is a difference as well though. It's 200 gigabytes a second on the M1 Pro and 400 gigabytes a second on the Max. You can see the Apple just is basically doubling everything here on the Max. Just equate the Max to being double the Pro in a lot of ways except the CPU. And this is also true for the external display support. The M1 Pro supports two external displays and the M1 Max supports four. So all together, here's what that looks like. Here's what it actually means though. If you're gonna be buying this MacBook Pro for school or something with like a light to moderate workload, you can either get the base 14 inch or easily, easily have enough power with the M1 Pro chip. I don't think you need to go any higher than the M1 Pro. Here's the thing, I do a lot of video work. If you are a render artist, if you compile a crazy amount of code with a lot of graphical elements, if you're using a ton of RAM, or your current Intel machine is not fast enough for what you're doing, you're gonna wanna get the Max chip. It's way more expensive, and it does increase the price quite a lot but I think it's gonna be worth it and, and that's why I actually decided to opt for the Max chip. Also, there's small workflow differences here as well. If you have three plus external displays connected to your current computer, which you're probably pretty cool if you do because that's insane, you have to get the Max to make that work with the Apple Silicon equivalent of Intel now, where if, if you use one display or up to two, then the M1 Pro is, is fine. If you're gonna connect to an external display at all, keep in mind that these are MacBook Pros, with insane 120 hertz displays connected to them already. Honestly, I was expecting it to take me a lot longer to go spec by spec between every difference here, but again, the fundamentals are the same across both. It's with screen size, battery, weight and size, and the chips. Those are all of the differences. So everything considered, which MacBook Pro am I getting? Now keep in mind, this could change, and I wouldn't say that this is my final answer just yet because I haven't actually gone hands-on with both the 14 and the 16 inch to decide which one is the best for me. But as of right now, I am planning to spec out a 14 inch. So I opted for the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip with the 30 core GPU and 10 core CPU option. I've upgraded to 64 gigabytes of unified memory and put a four terabyte SSD on here. Can you tell that I'm planning for this to replace my current 2020 iMac that I use and it is going to take every part of me to not buy a Pro Display XDR. Someone, please for the love of God, talk me out of buying a five to six thousand dollar Pro Display XDR right now because my I'm doing it. I'm gonna buy it right now, whoa. But wait a second, Sam, you don't want the extra battery and the bigger screen of the 16 inch, especially for somebody who does video work? Well, I've gotta figure that out exactly because I have fallen in love with the size of the M1 13.3 inch MacBook Pro that I, I think the 14 inch and the portability is something that matters to me a lot now that I can just slip it in a backpack, carry it around, it's super lightweight. And for everything but the battery life and the screen size being identical, it's, it's hard for me to pay the extra for the 16 inch when I'm just in love with the form factor of the 14 inch. But who knows, maybe that'll change when I get both in. I have ordered both. There will be coverage here on Tuesday, October 26th, the second I get them in. That is also when AirPods 3 come out. It is going to be a phenomenal week next week. So subscribe if you haven't already, hit a like, drop a like, leave a like if you enjoyed this or you learned something new, it helped you out with your buying decision and share it with somebody else. So that's all for now. Hope this helped you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm just blown away by these MacBook Pros. There's a new episode of my podcast where we talk more about it coming out very, very soon. So check that out down below. I've been Sam. That's all. Bye-bye. Peace.